Hi everyone, Julie here and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to go through how to baste or cover hexagons. To do that you need a pair of scissors, just a little pair, uh, somewhere to put your covered hexagons into which I've got little drawers from my storage thing paper hexagons or card these ones are card I've cut these myself out of sheets of like poster board from news agents or craft shops what you need is not probably the cheapest one because they sometimes are a bit too thin but probably my local news agent does ones or well, last time I bought they're probably a dollar now per sheet um, Kmart used to do them they were a dollar Spotlight do them and they're closer to two dollars and they're a bit thicker and they're more than what you actually need so just poster board um, the same sort of board that gift cards are made out of just your cheap gift cards not your really expensive embossed ones and you can cut up gift cards I've got a pile sitting there that need to be cut up at some point but because I'm not doing a lot of hexagon covering at the moment I've got these white ones that I cut up probably years ago I have been sewing hexagons together from my last quilt and my current quilt and I currently have I don't know probably it's probably about 10,000 hexagons here so between these and what will come out of my quilt as I go along I don't actually need to buy any more cardboard or cut up any more cards now these are normally perfectly usable you see some of these have got pictures on them they would have been from gift cards uh, business cards they quite often are a bit too thick some of these aren't I don't sort through them as I take them out but I do count the hexagons as I take them out the um, project I wait till I've got a pile then I'll count them into hundreds normally a hundred at a time I've got I don't know if you can see on that that the edge isn't totally even you can see where I've caught it with the needle so this this hexagon will be fine to be used again but possibly not for a third time all of these have only been used once some of these like this one is thin card to start with it's got bent the needles gone through it which no matter how hard you try you still end up doing that one will not get used again it'll get just thrown out when I go to you know, use these at some point here's another one it's an orange one it looks a bit jagged sometimes it's where you catch it to pull it out of where it is and sometimes you just sew through the edge which no matter how hard you try you still end up doing so I've got more than enough hexagons you know for to do my underwater quilt and who knows what else now the fabric these are half inch hexagons that I'm using so the fabric I've cut into one and a half inch strips and then I'm going to cut it again into one and a half inch along the strip so it gives me one and a half inch squares so one and a half inch is the size for um, half inch hexagons if you were going to do three quarter inch hexagons then I would it's got a crease in it or a thread out um, for three quarter inch hexagons you'd need two inch squares and for 
one inch hexagons you need one and a half inch sorry two and a half inch squares so for each quarter inch that you go up in hexagon size you go up half an inch in fabric size as squares now there's absolutely that's got the selvage on it and some aren't quite short they're rubbish so I've lost my train of thought so there's no need I know what I was going to say there is absolutely no need to cut these fabrics into hexagons even if you were doing a two inch hexagon which I think would probably be a four inch square I'm not sure I'd have to look at it but doesn't matter the main thing is if you take your square and I should put my glasses on before I do much more if you take your square see there's a piece again that was a bit of card gift card put your hexagon in the middle of your fabric and so it sits see if I can zoom in a bit so it sits in your fabric with a bit of space all the way around so probably see if we can't get this a bit closer so there is I can't even see where the camera is directed back this way okay so you have a square of fabric and your hexagon in the middle now roughly because that hexagon is an inch from side to side or from top to bottom no from side to side it's an inch so there's a quarter of an inch from each point and it's just under an inch high so there's a little bit more on the height size and that's all you that's all you need to do is make sure that there is space all the way round on your hexagon if you end up with a square of fabric that's a little bit short then make sure that it's still going to fit within the edges so I've got my fabric I've got my hexagons I don't need my cutter anymore for right now I've got another hundred of these cut I've got a bit more fabric to cut some more so there's some already cut enough fabric to probably do another hundred I'm not bothered these are just fabric that I had left over that I'm just covering for the sake of covering because I don't um, I don't have any fabric that I actually need which is for the sky and the sea and the sand in the underwater quilt so until I get that fabric I will just you know cover whatever I've got which I don't I don't actually need okay the other thing we need is we need a needle and thread now I've got a container here and I've got two lots of thread I've got I don't know why that one's in there I've got red thread and I've got it's just a beige it's not really white it's an off-white thread I've got lots of other color thread I've got when I started doing hexagons I did it with a beige and I found that if you're doing pale brown things you can't even see where your basting thread is so after my initial learning experience I now stick with red or white I have got blue pink you know hot pink um, you know lots of other colors of thread that is this quality that 
my um, craft shop sells um, and these are if I'm going to do something machine sewing or um, covering hexagons I use this thread um, only because it's you get a lot on the spool and it doesn't tend to knot up too much so if I was doing if I was doing this um, purple I'll probably use white thread for green I would use white the red would work but the white will show up more something like this palish yellow I would definitely use the red thread so you need a thread that's as contrasting as possible you know for orange there's no question you'd use the white so you would find yourself as contrasting a colour as you can and take it from there so we've got red so I'm going to use white thread so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of thread that's as wide as I can get my arms to go okay it's not rocket science I don't need to tie any knots I just need a nice long bit of thread so I don't have to keep cutting more bits so what I do is it's just a standard well it's not a standard sewing needle it's quite a largish one that is almost two inches long it's got a nice big eye on it I wouldn't say it was a tapestry needle but it was possibly a if you've got a domestic set of sewing needles it's probably the biggest one in the kit so I've got my thread I'm only using it single thickness got my hexagon place it in the middle and I place it with the points out to the side so I fold in one bottom corner and a second bottom corner get my thread I'm holding that with my thumb I get my thread and I'm going to come through and do one stitch with probably at least a half an inch tail fold that tail over and hold it with your thumb which I'm not sure if you can see that then I'm going to do a second stitch if not in the same holes well, I've pulled it through in the same holes as the first one then next to it and that is very common if you're not holding it tight enough you will actually pull the thread all the way through I just bring it tight and a little tug I tend to keep my thumb on that tail and I'm just going to go round each edge and fold it in if you haven't got the hexagon centered properly you can end up with a very small section at the top when you come to do the last fold normally it's okay just got to make sure you don't actually fold in your cardboard it's another reason I don't use paper for hexagons because I find they're too flimsy and you tend to fold them in so I've done all my stitches around I've got my double stitch here at the beginning now what I'm going to do is I'm going to still make sure I'm holding that double stitch at the beginning I've come round to the end I've done one stitch and I'm going to do another one and just tug it tight and once again cut off doesn't matter half inch tail an inch tail it doesn't much matter that one was probably a little bit should have done the stitch a bit closer but that's basically a hexagon done no knots in the thread do another one fold in those two point corners to the point
bit longer tail this time doesn't matter how long the longer you have the tail the more likely it is that you'll get it caught up in the when you sew the hexagons together and the worst that's going to happen is you sew the tail into your normal stitches or it'll come through to the other side of your sewing in which case you just cut it off it's not really a problem um, it's more of a problem if you sew the tails in which just means that you end up cutting the thread when you go to remove the hexagons rather than just undoing it so once again I'm round to the last bit done one stitch I'm still going to try and hold that first tail do a second stitch pull it not stupid tight because you can pull the whole thing through but that's a better example you can see that last tail that I've just done and the first tail is I can find the, there we go. the first tail is down there so there's the two tails I'll keep cu covering these but what I also want to show you is how to get your hexagons out once they're sewn in. This wasn't an intentional leave hexagons in. Okay, on this turquoise fabric, you can see that there's white thread and also that's a red thread. So white and red thread, it can be quite visible from for both. Now when I go to remove these hexagons, this hasn't been sewn into a, a row yet. I still need to keep the hexagons down the side, on both sides. But this and the bottom, because they will be joined onto other parts of the quilt. This top bit here isn't going to have anything joined to it so I can remove the hexagons not the edge ones but the other ones in between and what I tend to do is I'll pick one of those where the tail are the double stitch and just pull it loose pull one loose pull the other loose and then somewhere pick up the bit of thread and there it is I then use my um picker to pick the hexagon out and again one thread two threads and then pull the thread out use the arm picker now this hexagon is actually been it was almost stuck or hopefully I'll find the next one will be stuck let's do this one with the red thread one side Sometimes the knots are so tight you can't actually get your arm picker into it, in which case you just cut the thread next to it. You don't need to have all six undone. There it is, the thread, and I can pull that odd bit out as well. Now this I'm going to unpick, and it's caught. I've stitched through one of the bits of it. So I'm going to hold the fabric and pull the hex again sometimes it's like pulling something along a dotted line and there'll be four or five stitches and you'll hear them all ping but as long as you hold the fabric down and you're using decent thread it's not really an issue if you're using cheap see that one doesn't want to pull out so I'm just going to cut it And I can, there's got to be a knot somewhere because that's not pulling out. And there was a knot in the thread down underneath. So I've still managed to get the thread out. And then that's caught, pull that through. Now as I've said many times, I use the superior threads superior thread bottom line thread for sewing the hexagons together this is a empty spool I kept it for the number um, 
but bottom line is you go to their website or superior threads and you'll see on there you'll see bottom line thread they have the big spools for the machines and little spools this size which are it says bobbin quilting applique and it's 1420 yards they're about 10 10 US dollars each I have my friend buy me four for my birthday this year two two beige and two pale blue for this underwater quilt but this thread is actually really hard to break it um, doesn't tangle and it's just perfect for sewing hexagons together so that's how you get them out undo one end undo the other and pull it out I don't use that thread for basting because I prefer this thicker thread which is just your normal household thread just polyester thread it if I was sewing continually it would rubbish. it would um, knot up but because I'm only sewing such a little bit at a time it's not a problem so this great big long piece that I got off the spool will do about 15 half inch hexagons so I'm not continually um, getting a new bit of thread once again down to half inch to an inch tail fold it under hold it with your thumb pull the next one tight and just work your way round do not go through the hexagon because if you go through the hexagon you know let's say I went round and, and came back up through the next bit when you go to take these threads out you will find that they've you've sewn they run in between your actual sewing stitches and then it does tend to ping the stitches open I've had my very first quilt I did it that way it was one inch hexagons and years later every time I wash that quilt I find seams opening up not not because of bad sewing but because the threads from the hexagons broke the line of stitches on where hexagon edges join and they don't always show up all in one go the first time it was horrendous even when I was before I'd even started quilting it was horrendous or you know, after quilting before I did the binding when I was taking the hexagons out I had you know, so many repairs to do and each time I look at it it seems there's another repair to be done and it's not my stitching because I've got other quilts that I've sewn that have been washed loads of times with no no problems as far as seams opening up so do not go through your hexagon also if you go through your hexagon you've got less chance of being able to use it again I mean when you're sewing your hexagons together you do try obviously not to go through the card because it makes sewing more difficult but it does happen especially if you're using a really fine really sharp needle but I find yeah it's not a huge problem but it does make it harder to get the hexagons out and can make it so that you can't use that particular hexagon again once again pull that tight that first seam on this one is tucked in under where the fabrics folded so it's under there somewhere so the I find I'm trying to think of things to say I find it takes about 20 minutes to do 20 of these little ones 
So I can do a hundred of an evening and when I've got a lot to do and when I get the fabric and everything for this quilt I will probably do, depending on my studies, you know if I can do a hundred of an evening I'll be happy. Um, over the past few years I've averaged, not this year because I've been writing books and studying, um, I tend to probably cover 10,000 hexagons a year. on average for the past five, six years. I mean, I've still got a lot of hexagons for this quilt, but just not the, any more of the blue ones. As far as my studies go, I'll just stop this and start it again. As far as my studies go, I'm doing Studying through two different universities here, I'm doing an introductory law subject and a criminology subject through one university and I found I had so much spare time because I wasn't quilting that I've actually taken up an ancient history subject through a different university. And normally you need to keep everything you know, within the one university but in Australia they have what's called Open Universities Australia which is totally different from Open University like they have in the UK which I've actually studied through before. So Open Universities means that you do, you can do a degree or you can do individual subjects towards a degree through different institutions and you're actually enrolled through Open Universities but you study through other universities. Open Universities doesn't actually teach, they just organise. So I'm already enrolled for another introductory law subject, another criminology subject and another ancient history subject for trimester three this year. The ancient history I'm doing through a university that only has two semesters but this next ancient history one's only a, it's like squashed in and condensed into the Christmas period over eight weeks rather than 16. So that'll um, be interesting. But the other subjects, you know, I had a assignment due for ancient history that was due today and I submitted that over three weeks ago. I had a criminology assignment due and that's not due for two weeks and I've already submitted that like four weeks ago and my law assignments due at the end of next week I mean these are the major assignments there are minor ones as well um, so my major law assignment I submitted that was close on four weeks ago as well so I'm well ahead Criminology, all I've got left is a exam at the end of October, I think it is, or mid-October, or at some point I've got an exam that's worth 45%. Law, I've got an exam that's worth 45%. And Ancient History, I've got a small blog which I've never done a blog from a study perspective, a small blog that's due in a couple of weeks on disability in the ancient world and then a major blog which is like a portfolio that is on pretty much trying to study as a or trying to be an ancient historian. It's a little bit a it's not a facts and figures course, which is what I am used to it, it, with history. This was more of a, you know, we had to do an assignment, the one that's due today, on writing as an ancient author about the pandemic, because there's been pandemics and plagues in ancient history, and you can read about them, but it's writing about, you know, COVID-19, as an ancient author which was 
something I've never had to do before and apparently they've never taught this course before so it's you know, a learning thing for everybody but um, I'll be interested to see what my marks are for that the law assignment we also have each week we have a either a little mini quiz or a you have to add something to a discussion that has to be a certain number of words so you've got five of each of those, so I'm doing all right with those. Um, as well as the major assignment and the exam. And the exam is, it's a supervised exam. See that one just pulled out. Supervised exam, which means I've done a practice one where you, somebody, you know, you have to show them your room you have to cover up anything, like I've got a wall planner, I had to cover that up. They check that your desk is clear, um, all that sort of thing. And you're not allowed to open web pages or anything, you just have to stay in view of the camera. Just basically sit there for two and a quarter hours doing your exam. And at any point that they want to come and look at you, that they can see that you are there just in front of your monitor typing away or thinking so that's going to be a bit of an experience don't know and you're not allowed to leave so I'm not sure what you're supposed to do if you even though you would no doubt go to the toilet beforehand is if you need to go again during the exam it um I don't know it uh I know that if you've got medical condition that you can't sit for two and a quarter hours that there are exemptions, but I didn't put in for any of that because I don't have any condition that requires me that, you know, I can't not need to go to the toilet, but but we'll, we'll see. So it'll be interesting to have that exam. My ancient history hasn't got an exam and the criminology is a take-home exam. So you get, you, you do it all online and it's that one's all multiple choice which is good is you have two and a quarter hours from when you open the exam you've got a 24 hour window in which to do it but once you start it you then can't come back to it you've got to actually do it in that um two and a quarter hours which is basically you know two hours or 15 minutes of reading and um, two hours of writing or answering so every, everything is going well as far as that goes I've started and I say started because I haven't actually written a lot recently I've started another novel this is a science fiction one based on a teenage audience so different from what I've written before, different type of science fiction to what I've written before and this one I'm going to try and have properly published, not do it myself through Kindle. So it's a, it's a story about a young boy and he's you know, spent his whole life on the spaceship and just you know, he's started training as a security officer. So that's the beginning of it. And the book will go, whether it's one book or more, will go through his training and work and other aspects. So I'm not sure how many editions there'll be. I'm not sure if, it, if I can't get a publisher to take it, I'll um, do it through Kindle again, but I would rather try and have this one properly published especially as it's attracting a wider audience than my previous ones so we'll just see so that's I've got that on the back burner quilting's on the back burner um, I have been sewing some blocks you know that's one of them for the underwater quilt that's one of the top border that's the sky so I've got some of them to sew together I've got three or four to sew in, three. Oh, no, I think it's four now to add to what's done. It is slow going. 
so I'll be putting that aside after tonight I'll do a video next week of sewing them together again but that's it for quilting until until um, I get the fabric at the moment I've been um, not even thinking about buying fabric because I mean I have some fabric for the fish and the items and quite a bit of the rock you know the cliff on the side of it but the blues for the sky and the water I haven't got and I well, haven't got any more of and I don't have any of the yellow for the for the sand for the bottom and I was thinking of just using just a plain yellow homespun because it's cheap but I'll have to think I'll decide when I go to the shop you know the yellow homespun that I've done the binding on numerous quilts but at the moment my main focus are getting textbooks for next trimester there's one book for criminology that's a hundred dollars and there's two books for well there's one book for the foundations of law which is a hundred dollars and a law dictionary which is the same amount so that's three hundred dollars roughly in books that you know when you're unemployed yeah you know, it's like finding money out of thin air so that's a struggle the following trimester which is starts in February February or well, end of February um, the textbook says five hundred dollars worth of textbooks for the subjects I want to do so um, hopefully by then I'll be possibly making some money from YouTube which is still a ways off. I'm still only at almost 750 subscribers where I need a thousand. The number of hours people have watched, you know, that's not a problem. I've got the hours. I just need the subscribers, which is going up like a hundred every four months or something. So yeah, it, to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if it takes until the middle of next year to qualify because the numbers have dwindled from you know I had one week where I had a hundred subscribe new subscribers back in February but it was generally yeah you know, 20 30 40 you know, up to 70 and now this past week I had six the week before I had 10 the week before that I think I had five so it's not it's consistently low so you know if, if you can you know, share any of the videos or share the channel it'll be greatly appreciated I mean I'm not going to you know say you know like sub subscribe and share because you know all you regular people who already are subscribers and I do appreciate it so but we'll get there and I'll manage you know I'll do that you know where you after pay where you pay a quarter and then over the following three fortnights pay the rest so I get my books one at a time doing it that way and um, you know that's that's how I'm going to have to get them I don't have any other choice yeah each year I can get being unemployed I can get an advance from Centrelink of $500 which they take out at like 30 something dollars a fortnight to pay it back so it takes six months to pay it back, but that money, unfortunately, is going to... I already owe that for to my friend from my car, so I can't go and buy textbooks with it when I can get that in November. Nor can I go and buy fabric with it. So I'll just plot along, do what I can do with what I have got, and, um, you know, just carry on carrying on as I have been you know I've been unemployed yeah you know, because I can't work because of my um, mobility issues and now because studying is you know I'm I've been on before I was a foster carer I was before doing that for a few years I was on student payment and unemployment 
you know, obviously not at the same time. Then I was a foster carer for a few years. Then back to unemployed, and I've been on unemployment now for August. Okay, so we're talking for six years living on basic, basic payment. I've spent a couple of years with a part-time swim teaching, but, you know, there's never been, you know, money for extras as such. So I'll just keep on managing as I do, keep myself occupied and relatively happy. I'm quite happy doing this. And um, eventually this quilt will get done. Eventually my studies will finish. You know, probably in five years. And eventually I will get, make, make some money from YouTube. And we'll just take it from there. But this is... Okay. That was... I've got that much bit of thread left, it's not worth it for making another one. But I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's 17 hexagons I've just fin um, covered while we've been talking. Some look a bit better than others, but they're all, they will all work. You know, there's no, um, nothing wrong with any of those. I'm going to go to my friends for dinner tomorrow night. While I'm there, I will sit and cover, there's a hundred in there. So I will cover those while I'm there because I go there early. They have dinner early. Um, I'll go there, you know, mid-afternoon, cover some hexagons do a bit of study before a tutorial tomorrow night and see they just fit in there I can fit four rows of 25 they can go there got a bit more fabric to cut out some more but I don't really need them at the moment but, um, but that's pretty much all that's involved you've got fabric, you've got hexagons, you've got needle and thread you know, you've got the white thread and a needle and that's pretty much all you need so once again half inch hexagons you need one and a half inch fabric squares three quarter inch hexagons you need two inch squares hexagons you need two and a half inch squares so just as long as when you fold the fabric in on your hexagon and the cats just come in when you fold the fabric in the fabric isn't so big that it's going to fold all the way across so if I had like a two and a half inch bit of fabric, a big square, and let's say my hex that was the middle and the hexagon, if it covered all the way down and past, that's too big. You need to be able to tuck all these sides in and have them not go all the way over the hexagon. That's the only that's the only thing you could have done one and three quarter inch squares I find one and a half is enough you could have done a tiny bit bigger I wouldn't go any smaller if you were to use a template to cut your fabric into hexagons it, they do tend to give you a quarter inch whereas this gives you a little bit more than a quarter on the top and bottom that's up to you but there's no need to do them in hexagon size the um, squares are perfectly usable 
So on that note, I will go and sort this video out and get everything ready to take to my friends tomorrow for um, to cover the rest of these. And I'll be back next week with a video on, which will be pretty much the same as other videos, on sewing these blocks together for the underwater quilt. So I will see you then and thank you.